Where are you going? They're giving away free melons on the markets on the other side of town. Let's go. Free melons. And so the adults started running to the market on the other side of the town. And pretty soon, all the people in the town started running to the market on the other side of the town. <laughs> and I was looking at all this running around. And finally, this little old man passed by my window. He was running, like crying barely because he was really old. And I said, where are you going? I'm going to the market on the other side of the town and giving away free money. <laughs> I said, it must be true then. So I jumped out of the window and I left. <laughs> Which only goes to show that to tell a good story, you have to believe it yourself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, a skill. Above all, of course, this is not my story. Yeah. I uh, adapted it to make it a little bit more interesting. But it can be told in many different ways, and it's a very old story. It can be adapted and varied. So, above all, a story. A Storytelling is a skill to be experienced and worked on practically. Just as you can't learn to swim by reading a book, the only way to improve as a storyteller is to tell lots of stories. But how do you choose the stories? What do you tell? How do, how do you use materials? I brought lots of reality here. Some of them, some of the reality is going to be used. Some of them is just to show you like different things that you can use to aid you in your storytelling. First, believe in the tale that you're going to tell. If you don't like the book, it's not really, you know, it's not good to force it. You have to, you know, get something that you like, that you're familiar with, that you feel comfortable with, that I don't know, that has an appeal to you in some way. Choose stories which you enjoy. Maybe you have stories from your childhood. They don't even have to be books. We can tell stories that are passed on from generation to generation. Maybe you have an interesting story or something that happened to you, and you want to bring that to the classroom to share with your students or your teachers. Don't learn them by heart. It loses interest. It, it becomes mechanical, and it shouldn't be mechanical. It should be done with, with love, with giving, with dedication. Telling a story implies a listener. So remember that there's someone that's going to be listening to your story. And maybe put yourself in their, their shoes. Is it going to be interesting? What am I going to do to, to make it more appealing? To make it more magical? To make it more fun? Beware of literary temptation. Don't overload. Keep it simple. It doesn't have to be complicated and full of, of grammar structures and complicated words. It can be simple. Mistakes are natural, so just improvise. It's okay. First line, last line. It's like a kind of a technique. If you remember the beginning and the end, it will give you more confidence to keep on going. So, yeah, once upon a time, and then in the end, they all lived happily ever after. So if you remember the beginning and the end, it makes your job easier and you get more confidence. Golden rule, you can never use a copy of a text in front of you. You focus on the listening not on the book. So you have to learn a story before you start telling it. It's not that you can't read a book, but reading from a book is not necessarily storytelling. It's just reading. Can you go back to the So, first story is the 
the noise he has. Do you know this story? Yeah? Some of you know it? And I'm going to need some help. Okay? So, let me just prepare myself. Because I'm an old lady. I know that I'm not very young, but I'm not old. I have to make myself old. <laughs> kind of old. I need someone to be my clock. Can I have a volunteer? So, you're my clock. You can stay here. You can, yeah, you can stay here. I'll need some of you to stand up, but you can stay here. And I need you to go tick, tick, tack. Not right now, but soon. <coughs> I need someone to be my wind. And you just blow lightly, very lightly, not right now. Very lightly. <laughs> but more of you can be winds. You can all like this. Please. You can all blow. Please, you can stay here if you want, inside my house. <laughs> <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. Please, another wing. I also need three don't feel offended, and I need an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and a dog. And a mouse. And a cat. Cat? You can wear your ears if you want. Thank you. A mouse? A mouse? A dog? Bloody clock, the wind. 
end. I don't know what to do. Why a cat? Who are you to do that? A cat? Yes. Really? I think so. I think it's a thing. Do you yeah. think it would help me? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. <coughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're lovely. Okay. So she went to the store. Got her car. Okay. She drives still. <laughs> she went to the store. Hi. Oh, you're so cute. I really don't know what to do. 
So I think maybe I might my animals are too too small. Maybe maybe I should get yeah. a bigger one. Maybe bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> an elephant. Oh, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yes, I think I've so. always loved elephants. Yes, you can put it all in the garden, in the garden, and the other animals. No, 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 they have to sleep with me because I can't sleep. And I'm sure that an elephant will help. Yes, I'm sure. Look, there's one. It's really pretty. Okay. Let me see if I can buy it and take it home.
time you move. Yes, and I'm fair about it. So, in class, when you're teaching something like any story, really, you can do exactly what I did. Of course, you can focus more on specific vocabulary, maybe that you're working in the classroom, maybe that you've been working on a project or in your books or whatever materials that you use. But it's very important to prepare the listeners. Yes? You saw all the realia, you saw all the, you know English, so I don't really have to pre-teach you. It's possible, right? You can show all the old objects before. And if the learners are to gain the most from listening to stories, make sure that this experience is different from the work that they do at school. Because they already do that every day at school. So it must be different from their reality. It has to be magical. It has to be fun. It has to be engaging. It has to be motivating. Right? Beware of squeezing a story so much in order to extract the pedagogical possibilities of it. It's not to be pedagogical, it's to be fun in the first place, it's to be engaging. And the greatest value in stories is simply the listening and the participating. Not all storytelling needs exercises after. You don't have to do a text or write anything about it or... It can be just storytelling. It's that simple. Second story. Now, this story I've heard many times, and it can be told in many different ways. But I've, I've heard also Lucy telling this story in one of her workshops that we had the pleasure to attend in her school in Florianopolis. And, um, well, it's an adaptation of that. We actually have the materials now to tell that story, and we do it in my school.